Hi everyone, welcome to another uh, video of uh, the wrestling saga. I am Kushal, that guy from India who likes AEW. And today we will specifically be talking about AEW Dark's latest episode. As always, if you wish to look at the wins and losses which occurred in the match, please have a look over here. Let's give this a couple of seconds and once uh, you all may have read, that's when I can begin sharing my thoughts on the individual matches. Okay, we started off with the Darby Allen promo about his upcoming uh, title match with uh, Jungle Boy from the Jurassic Express. I found this promo necessary. It not only shows a champion defending his title consistently, but it's showing him doing so with some emotions. And this should definitely disprove those people who believe that Darby Allen in his character only has one or two emotions to show as such. It shows some story behind the match directly. Given that there are some facets of Jungle Boy which Darby Allen isn't necessarily fond of. Also, since the future match will involve Jungle Boy, that's equally amazing. Given that Jungle Boy is one of those individuals in AW who have had the most matches making him the textbook definition of a workhorse. I am definitely looking forward to any of his matches, especially ones that involve a title as such. However, I doubt whether he'll win this title match against Darby Allen. The setup for his victory, if suppose he would win the match, which I doubt, would just seem inadequate because there were no prior talks about this match. So although it might be a fun, exciting, amazing match, I really doubt if uh, Jungle Boy will walk away with a title as such. The first proper match was between Joey Janela against Will Alte. Yeah, that's a slightly funny last name. Seeing Joey go crazy in any match is always fun to watch. But when you find a newly introduced wrestler such as Will Alte, who is not only athletic but also agile and in fact got most of the offense within the match, it just makes the match even more interesting rather than just being a fun to watch match. I certainly look forward to not just seeing Joey Janela who is always interesting in matches. I look forward to seeing more matches of Will all day because he's someone whose wrestling style definitely I found interesting. We then had a tag team match wherein uh, Ryzen and John Skyler went up against Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian of the SCU. This was an alright match considering that the SCU were supposed to win. I don't think so there's any point for them to lose a match prior to their title shot against the Young Bucks. And while Ryzen was someone that I found irritating initially when I started to watch AEW, his comedy and his brand of wrestling have sort of grown on me, so I find I find him alright. And then as far as uh, John Skyler is concerned, he's also alright. We then had another tag team match but in the women's division, wherein uh, Big Swole and Kylan King, accompanied with Red Velvet, went up against um, a pair of twin sisters who also come from a Samoan Tonga family uh, called um, Ashley and Steph MK. Big Swole and Kylan King are two female wrestlers that I love because I like their in-ring style, I like their attitude and I just feel that they can make most matches that they are a part of interesting to watch. Seeing another Samoan related kind of a female tag team that was interesting and while their moves within the ring still were a bit rehearsed slightly boring but I could see that perhaps in the future they can eventually become interesting. They can consider they can become interesting ahead but the match as is was alright. We then had a Ricky Starks promo on Hangman Page. It was a fantastic promo because number one this marks the beginning of a feud between both these gentlemen which could perhaps help improve the rankings of Ricky Starks Ricky Starks as is is great within the ring and he's equally great on the mic. Even when he sits as part of the announcement team on the dark shows, I find that interesting too. So yeah, I am excited. If he's going to begin a proper feud with Hangman Page, I'll definitely look forward to those matches. Brick Aldrich and Cole Carter then had uh, a match against The Butcher and The Blade accompanied with Matt Hardy and Private Party. The Butcher and the Blade definitely demolished the competition. I won't say they butchered the competition because that will be... Uh, everyone can sort of assume and guess that would work. Now, Brick Aldridge, I've spoken about him in the past. I do find him interesting. He seems to be a really strong person and he can play the role of that particular guy in the ring who can be a hard hitter. As far as uh, Cole Carter is concerned, 
Although the dude doesn't look that big compared to the others in the match, he did have some interesting spots. He definitely seems to be that kind of a person who can be agile, dexterous, landing some sharp shots on the opponents, on his opponents. The match was boring for me not because of the men involved within the match but because the result of the match was pretty much decided. Most matches involving the HFO end up going in their favor because there's interference inside and outside the ring. Sonny Kiss then had a match against Jake Manning. The only thing that caught my interest within the match was uh, the persona which was uh, portrayed by Jake Manning where, wherein he portrayed uh, being a boy scout. Now that was definitely different and slightly funny. While Sonny seems to be a likeable character and also one who is extremely athletic, I didn't really enjoy the match. Perhaps it's because I'm used to seeing her in tag team matches. They've just gotten me used to seeing them in that uh, uh, capacity. So I just need to get used to once again seeing her matches in an individual capacity. So in that sense it was an okay match but one that I didn't personally enjoy. Then we had Jay Leon, Midas Black and a newly introduced wrestler Ken Broadway going up against uh, Stu Grayson, Evil Uno and number 10. Any match with Jay Leon and Madas tends to be funny given that these guys are pretty much on a roll since the past two weeks. You throw in a new character such as Ken Broadway whose gimmick of suddenly jiving out of nowhere within the ring or throwing money everywhere. That was a little funny, probably consider it an additional 20% humor in the match. And then I'm not even going to talk about Dark Order because I, almost, I love both those guys, I love their storylines, I love their wrestling styles. So you throw in all these three entities and eventually you, you definitely have not just a fun match but also a good match. I'm kinda sad though that while Dark Order tends to win the three and the four man tag teams, they're sort of on a losing streak. Whenever individually they go up against members of the Hardy Foundation or uh, they end up going against Max Caster, most of them have lost to Max Caster in an individual capacity. So I kind of find it shocking that this particular faction has 5 to 6 people or even more than that and still they end up falling prey to uh, shenanigans. Otherwise, like I said, it was a fun, interesting, it was a good match. I had fun watching it. Billy Gunn with, the Austin, uh, with Austin and Colton Gunn then had uh, a singles match against a poor guy called Andrew Palace. And the, re and the reason I'm calling Andrew a poor guy is because Billy was already pissed off after the punch that QT Marshall threw at him during an interview with Dasha uh, yesterday on AW Elevation. So whatever frustration Billy Gunn had, Andrew Palace was the unfortunate recipient of that. And after quickly finishing that match, Billy Gunn then uh, essentially issued a threat that he will be coming after QT Marshall and the factory on Dynamite. So I'm curious, what is the gun club up to? And I'm looking forward to seeing that in the next couple of hours when Dynamite comes out on Fight Team. Fuego Del Sol then had a singles match against Top Flight Tag Team's uh, member Dante Martin. It's surprising and shocking in a way about how inversely proportional Fuego's win record is with respect to his YouTube and his social media popularity. So while the dude is majorly popular and a constant member on the BTE vlog and the Sami Guevara vlog, his win record is almost not existent. I'm looking forward to when this particular guy who is a master of the Tornado DDT and who is apparently loved by Dustin Rhodes, when will he eventually find a victim for his Tornado DDT? Having said that, Dante Martins wins while definitely he's an athletic guy, he, he can give great matches so far. But what's the point of his wins? Because the moment his brother is back, he will majorly return to the tag team scene. So then what's how do his singles wins sort of help him? I am unclear on that front. So while this was a good match, I believe from a long term standing it doesn't really serve either Dante Martin or Fuego del Sol. Diamante then had a singles match against a newly introduced wrestler, if I am not mistaken, called uh, Queen Aminata. I don't know why, it's maybe because of uh, playing ARPG isometric games for all these years that Instead of reading Queen Aminata, I was almost about to pronounce her name as Queen Animata. I'm a necromancer class lover, so in case there are any Diablo 2, Diablo 3 fans out there, necromancer for the win. Diamante got a reasonably quick win against Queen uh, Aminata, who I believe got injured during the course of the match, and I hope she gets well soon. 
It was an okay match as such, which once again had moves which seemed to be slow, rehearsed, and that's what sort of puts me off when I'm watching a match. But there's a very clear reason behind it. So I'm not being critical, I'm just sharing my thoughts as a fan. Some wrestlers and their matches initially can be a bit slow as such, but eventually they get ahead, they improve. We've already seen improvement in the AW women's division from that perspective. So it was an okay match for now, not one that I enjoyed that much. Hayden Backlund and uh, Kit Sackett then had a match against Varsity Blondes and like Dark Order, I'm also a fan of the Varsity Blondes. I do firmly believe that they can give some fantastic matches. They already have been a part of a couple of fantastic matches. And they definitely racked up a win against uh, Hayden Backlund and uh, Kit Sackett, who I should also compliment. They were active on Dark Elevation episode and they were active today on Dark also. So kudos to their stamina and endurance for being a part of matches back to back. That's amazing. Max Caster then had another singles match against another member of Dark Order which he demolished because of his cheating. Alan Angels, although I'm a fan of that guy, although I'm a fan of the Dark Order, I have to talk initially and a lot about Max Caster because number one, he's turning out to be a brilliant heel. He's consistently playing the part of someone who I'm beginning to hate as a fan. I mean, that's just that's just great on his front. It's, it's really good acting. But um, the kind of raps that he issues at the beginning of the match against his opponent, those raps are hilarious. Those raps are intelligent. In fact, AEW's music, a YouTube channel in of itself, should consider making a playlist just of the rap burns which Max Caster ends up putting on his opponents because I believe there will be a segment of people just following or, or adding that playlist into their own YouTube uh, account. The dude's really good. I, I enjoy listening to his raps, man. And, it, and it's funny. And, and it's contextually relevantly funny. It's not just funny hey, 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 for the heck of it. The match went in favor of, uh, of uh, Max Caster, even though Aaron Angels was strong early on because he, he took his chain, he punched, KO'd essentially uh, Aaron Angels and thus won the match. And definitely that once again helps further and enhance the rankings of Max Caster as he moves up the ladder. Baron Black then had a match against uh, Will Powerhouse Hobbs and like um, Vary Morales, the moment I see Baron Black on any match card, I know this guy is going to lose because that is the way he's been booked so far. Now over here, his loss was relevant even from a story point of view because William Will Hobbs will be having a match with Christian Cage on the upcoming Dynamite show. And therefore, for him to be seen as a strong contender who's not just young, but actually he's got he's got strength, he's got skills. Baron Black had to lose, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Will Hobbs consistently is appearing as a big, mean, strong person who definitely carries his weight within Taz's team FTW. So this match was good in that regard, and I definitely look forward to seeing Christian Cage's match with Will Hobbs in the Dynamite show to come. Pack with the Lucha Bros then had a singles match against Dean Alexander. And when I looked at the timestamp on the entire YouTube upload, I knew this match was going to be short, but the match's actual length was probably my estimation divided by 3. Because Pack directly went on the offense and he put Dean Alexander in his submission move for Dean to I probably pass out? I, I don't think so, he tapped also, I think he just passed out. So Pac was definitely pissed off in the match because of which the match was considerably cut short. And this could probably be because of the way he and Ray Phoenix lost their tag team match against the Young Bucks because the Young Bucks cheated. And I believe the f their feud with the Young Bucks as such should not get over that quickly. That should definitely continue because a Pack by default is a 5 on 5, 10 on 10 kind of a wrestler. But a pissed off Pack is probably a 12 out of 15 on 10 kind of a wrestler and I would love to see as a fan what he what he does to his opponents. So in that sense, uh, yeah, uh, the match was good even though it was super brief and I look forward to the next recipient of Pax Wrath within AEW. That's all the thoughts that I had with respect to AEW Duck. Most of the matches I enjoyed, some of them I didn't but those were mostly not because of the wrestlers but because of the storyline and the prior bookings or because some of them were extremely new in the ring. Um, I hope that you liked my thoughts. I won't tell you all to subscribe. Do it if you all wish to. Yeah, that's all that I have. I hope you guys are okay. Take care and catch you all soon. Bye-bye.